Ms. Elise Sparks Jackson performing at Club Mead during this year's Native American Heritage Month observance. Hello and welcome to Mead Week. I'm Brian Spann. More from the observance in a moment. Also this week, COVID vaccinations for 5 to 11 year olds, the annual German Italian POW Remembrance, and our podcast for Mead Declassified dives into the holiday season. These stories and more, but first at this week's installation town hall, Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland responded to a variety of questions from traffic issues to infrastructure. The most asked question, when will we ease some of the COVID restrictions and fully reopen? We got the vaccine mandate. Everyone, you know, all the employees are supposed to be vaccinated now. Shouldn't that mean we should be able to lift those, those, um, those mitigation measures? I will tell you from my perspective, um, the measure of effectiveness, the measure on whether the vaccine is being effective is the reduction in case rates. What we should see is as, the, as more and more of the population gets vaccinated and we continue to take these mitigation measures that we are taking, we should see a decline um, in the case rates, which will then trigger the changes to HPCon conditions and mask mandates, et cetera. The Colonel added that the current COVID case rate in the surrounding communities was nine in 100,000, and that we need to reach two in 100,000 to move from health protection condition Bravo to HPCon Alpha. You can watch the town hall in its entirety. Just go to our Facebook page and click on videos. In other news, each November, German and Italian military attaches from Washington, D.C. join with Fort Meade to remember the 33 German and two Italian prisoners of war interred in the post cemetery. This year, the speakers acknowledge the history while emphasizing the strength of today's allied partnerships. And I'm very proud to serve in this Bundeswehr as this German armed force is the longest lasting up to now, 66 years, and in peace. Though I must say, the last war we won, and that was the Cold War. We got half of Germany back. We still have friends and partners and allies. This is definitely a very challenging period worldwide, but we are facing it with determination thanks to our best qualities and our values of democracy, freedom and respect for every life that characterize our societies, even in the most difficult times. Turning to news from Kibro Ambulatory Care Center, this week the center started administering the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine to children 5 to 11 years of age. All DOD eligible children can get the vaccine at the McGill Training Center Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. No appointments are necessary. Meanwhile, Fort Meade's Equal Opportunity Advisors hosted this year's Native American Heritage Month observance at Club Mead. Native dance performances were a big highlight. We wonder how about in reference to our clothing, what we wear, how we utilize it. It all has meaning, all has purpose. And so therefore, not just for decoration or perhaps beauty to the eye who look upon us, but again, purpose and meaning with each and every part that we wear. This year's keynote speaker was Dr. Ashley Minner, a member of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina and the Assistant Curator for History and Culture at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. Her presentation focused on the tribes indigenous to Maryland. The Piscataway are still alive and well and with us today. There are two uh, bands recognized by the state of Maryland as of 2011, despite the fact that Piscataway folks were thriving here roughly 12,000 years before John Smith showed up. Yes, that John Smith um, in the 1600s. So they have um, a legacy in this place that surpasses um, what most folks can imagine. The largest group of American Indian people in the Baltimore region and this far south as well are actually not indigenous to the state of Maryland. They are members of the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina. A quick item from the Post Chaplain's Office. The chaplain is now offering an Islamic Jummah worship service every Friday at 1130 at the Argonne Hills Chapel Center. For more information on this service, call 240-636-9715. And finally this week, join our podcast host Joe Nieves and Sherry Kuyper for the latest episode of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified. It's the first in a series of podcasts talking about the holiday season, the good and the bad. The topics range from how to avoid stress to managing your finances. That's Fort Meade Declassified, available just about everywhere you get your podcasts. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.